Moving to the other side of the world is tough. We know this from our own experience of making the move during a global pandemic. To help you decide whether a life down under is for you, this series aims to share with you the highs and the lows of the migration journey, with the hope of helping and inspiring you to make the move yourself. If you're already thinking of making the move and you're worried about trying to obtain a visa, then you need to speak to our friends at True Blue Migration Services. Get yourself a free, no obligation visa assessment when you mention that Johnston life. Let them tell you your best chances of migrating to this beautiful country. Speak to them now on their website at www www.truebluemigration.com Our guest today made the plunge and moved all the way from Germany to the Gold Coast. Falling in love with an Australian might be the perfect dream for some people, but starting a family during COVID has really given them some perspective about where they want to live in the world. Is life better for them now in the Gold Coast after moving from Frankfurt? I guess we're going to find out. Welcome Beck. How's it going? Good, good. Thanks. <laughs> How are you finding Australia so far? Really nice. It's been a journey and a half. But it's been really good. Why has it been a journey and a half? Come on, you've piqued our interest. Now. <laughs> um, we are currently living in a semi-permanent situation and living with family can be interesting. So this is the, oh, okay, the surprises are there. But like the country itself is great. So people normally when they come over here, they they have different situation in the sense that they're always... It's not always. Sometimes they're moving here and they're having to find somewhere to live. Mm. So you're you're able to move in with family. What's that like? Um, I thought of our migration to be a bit cushy because I'm on the partner visa. So we already had family in place and we could always come back to them. So I knew mm -hmm. that like that stress factor was just not there. And it's like, okay, we, we have a place to go. And that's great. And from then onwards, we can look for something for our own. So that's really comforting i guess and it made it heaps easier to absolutely go. absolutely tell us a little bit more about yourself yeah i'm back 28 and um my husband is australian and that's how the whole process started I'm like oh we could actually move to australia and i've always wanted to live abroad for at least yeah a certain amount of time so that was certainly the idea and then it all happened funnily enough also over covid like kind of pushed us to do it. Why did COVID push you to, to make the move to Australia? Just because you never really know what's going to happen. And sorry, there's building noise. No, don't worry. Uh, COVID was or showed us that very easily the world can just be locked up and you have to see what you want to do or see what whatever place you want to visit. And we're young. Our daughter's very young. She's not in school yet. So quite flexible it was the right time i'd say so it was like a let's do the experience now mm. while we have the chance before something happens and then potentially we could have that taken away from us yeah yeah and it yeah it encouraged us i would say what was covid like for you in germany then what, what how, how was it that made you think do you know what we're just gonna leave and we're gonna go to australia we'll try this out instead we did have quite strict rules um especially in the beginning where you should isolate and for us, it was lucky because we lived in a village where we could still go for walks and go outside and be there. But for instance, we didn't have um, a balcony or a yard. So it was very indoorsy. Very much city living, was it? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, nah, I really want to go outside and use the outdoors more. And Australia is a better place for that. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit better for the outdoory lifestyle, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, what was your life like in Germany then before you moved? Um, we lived in a apartment um, nearish Frankfurt and travelled or commuted to work since, well, home office was a thing then. We worked remotely during COVID. We had our first baby in Germany and made use of the very nice parental leave system we have over there. <laughs> well, what's I'm it like there? Because I'm actually on my parental leave at the moment in Australia. Mm. And do you know what? It, it's better than England. Wow, that's that's good on you. Germany is still better. <laughs> okay, so what's it like in Germany then? And we can make that comparison. Uh, we get three years of job guarantee. Uh, if you take it within the first eight years of the child's life. And that is for both parents. Wow. And if the husband or the partner who didn't give birth takes two months off as well, you will get 14, 14 months 
off 60% of your wage. Oh, okay. It all starts to get a bit confusing, doesn't it, when you're sort of sitting there yeah. thinking <laughs> percentages. For you, other than kind of thinking to yourself, we want to live somewhere else while we're young, give our, our daughter the opportunity to do so. Were there any other important reasons for your move? Um, it is also to be close to Hayden's, my husband's family, because being in a binational relationship, you, you're you always in between, like you're close to one family, but the other half misses out. So we also wanted to be closer to Hayden's family, saying that they're still 18 hours driving away from us within Australia. Where are they based? In Townsville, which is northeast Queensland. And we are on the Gold Coast at the moment. So so which family are you staying with on the Gold Coast? Um, we're still staying in a family house and with Hayden's brother at the moment. Ah, Hayden's brother. Partner. Yeah. How do they normally get back to visit the um, the family? Um, usually you would fly, but since they have dogs, I think they drive most of the time. And uh, as well, have you seen the cost of flights that they're going to be for this Christmas season yep. if you're planning to go up there? I think I saw the other day, it was $1,600 if you want to get from the East Coast to Perth. I think that's what we probably paid the equivalent of to get here from England. I I know that was pre-COVID, but I don't know how people are going to be able to afford that this Christmas. It's sad, isn't it? My husband, he just booked a train ticket to go from Brisbane to Townsville. So he will try to find another way, see how that goes. Or just do the drive. I think our our longest drive that we've done so far in Australia is about 11 hours, not nine to 11 hours. We went to the Hunter Valley. Mm -hmm. Uh, in New South Wales, yep. really, really lovely, especially if you like wine. Yep. <laughs> but we broke it up. We kind of did it as a little bit of a road trip, which was, which is great. It's a beautiful way to see the country, and it actually mm. doesn't seem so onerous doing it all in a one. So yeah, that's depending true. on on your your schedules, I, I definitely recommend trying to do that up to Townsville. Yeah, that'd be an awesome road trip. Yeah, that's true. We did do a little bit of a road trip. We visited Hayden's grandparents. We flew into Newcastle, and then. We, from there, drove to Canberra and wow. then from Canberra to Dubbo, which is the capital of the outback. Um, mm. Yeah, and then drove four hours back. So it was always four hours between the places, which is doable. That's, that's a good Yeah, especially with a little one as well. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I think we were, even when we did it with Aurora, she was coming up to three mm. and we were limited to any more than four hours yeah. and she'd just start screaming in the back. Yeah. We are hoping that she'd sleep, but oh, I don't think our child sleeps a lot. Yeah. <laughs> We've got one of those. How did your visa work, sort of getting over here? What did you have to do for the partner visa? Um, we had to do a lot and I would recommend everyone to start early because you need proof of the genuine relationship or that your relationship is genuine so how did you prove it because our previous guests she had to do a similar thing yeah and she made a powerpoint Mm -hmm. um did you do the same is it all about the powerpoint (laughs) some somewhat yes um we actually we went a bit overboard maybe but we did a google drive and had a designated folder and then have four folders within this folder because you have four pillars that you have to fulfill you have to you sound a lot more organized than i am <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i am a pa though that was my strong suit but yeah we had um to give financial proof we had to give commitment and relationship and household was also a topic um okay and another one which i can't remember right now yeah it is um very much if you live together and you have shared bills that's the easy to have a shared bank account that's easy for the finance mm-hmm. stuff that's you just pop in screenshots and you also have to show photos that you do stuff together travel together that you have common friends that you get invitations to like both names so we collected everything that we could find and we were like people. i was gonna say trying to find things like invitations in retrospect don't those things get thrown away yeah so it's, it's a really good piece of advice to start early exactly. because then you can go oh what's all this weird stuff that yeah. we just need to keep hold well, of at least take a photo before you check it out because yeah that, that's the point isn't it yeah, yeah take a photo of everything i bet you you raided things like facebook um to yeah oh, there's a picture of us from this day exactly. and things like that yeah that's also like posting and making your relationship public it's also a big thing yeah we actually got married before i applied for the visa because i changed my name so i wanted to have it on this passport only the new one that's why we waited a bit um, and also the processing time can be quite long so that's another point where we're like well we better start early 
because it could take a while to get the visa. From start to finish, how long did it take you? The visa was granted two and a half months after I applied for it. So it was very oh, quick. Wow. But as I said, like the decision making and the preparation, that was probably six months in advance already. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I, I guess it also is tantamount to how much effort you put into mm. to doing the visa as well, because I can imagine if, if people don't put enough information in, they, they don't have as much evidence, then yeah. they're going to end up prolonging it. It's yeah. not an easy decision to make. We definitely, we front loaded everything. We basically, I applied for it and then I've uploaded everything that I had. And if you're waiting for them to contact you, of course, it'll be a longer process. So did you did you have to, when you say you front-loaded things, did you have to add on all of your police checks? Yeah. Did you have to do a medical as well? Yeah, yeah I had to do medical. Um, that was luckily, in, like Germany has two offices, one in Berlin and one in Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. And we live close to Frankfurt, so that was good for us. But it can also Germany only has two places to get a medical done. Exactly, yeah. Wow. Like if you live in Munich, you would have to plan to take a day off work and go to Frankfurt Absolutely. or Berlin. Um, I know there wasn't exactly that many in England, but I think there was maybe six. Okay. But then yeah. Germany's so much bigger, isn't it? And <laughs> well, there's just two. Yeah, I think you can also go to Amsterdam and that's closer to you. <laughs> yeah, you're like right yeah. on the border. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quicker to go to another country For than sure. actually going in within your own. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, no, that was um, that was okay. We I skipped the chest X-ray because I was pregnant at the time, and I never had. Oh, you to. got to skip it. We had to wait for ours. Yeah. That's what prolonged ours even further. Yeah. No, my visa was granted before I gave birth, and they never asked for it. So it's a bit oh, okay. Fantastic. <laughs> well, there is light at the end of the tunnel for anyone thinking about yeah. getting pregnant in the middle of the process. You may, yeah. you may not. You just kind of have to take it as it as it goes. Yeah. I yeah. It also. I think depends on what country you're from. Well, they probably think Germany's got a fantastic health system. She must be all right. Should be okay, yeah. <laughs> what was your <laughs> migration journey like then from when, when you got the visa grant? Um, it did come earlier than expected. So we were like, oh, wow, okay. So Christmas will not be in Germany. Because <laughs> you have a year to um, travel into Australia from the yeah. visa grant or the group. And then we thought it would actually help um, – for my in-laws to come to Germany and meet my family because due to COVID that didn't happen earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So we they'd never met before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we oh got wow! There and we had a live stream to Australia um, on our wedding because it was still COVID and they yeah. Come. So yeah, they've only met online and it was the first like the last three weeks that we were in Germany were the first time that my parents met his parents mm -hmm. and. Wow. That was wow. really what was that like? Uh, it was great because we had something to look forward to and it wasn't mm -hmm. these, oh, God, I will leave my family and uh, all these daunting thoughts that suddenly hit. Um, and it was more like, yeah, no, we, we're on holidays and they will come and we'll have a great time. And, yeah, and then we'll fly to Australia. No worries. <laughs> I bet that's that's kind of a reverse feeling for lots of people in, in Australia in the sense mm. that they're, they're worried how often they're going to see their own family. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the things that came across my wife's mind a, a lot yeah. during COVID. When am I next going to be able to see my family? Mm -hmm. But I guess for you being already in Germany, you, you had it the other way around. So you've, you've already prepared yourself mentally yeah. for those kind of feelings. Exactly. What's it like knowing, I, I get asked this quite a lot as well. What's mm -hmm. it like knowing that you've taken your daughter away from your, your German side of your family? Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> Not going to lie, it is really, that was something I really struggled with. Uh, we do manage well, we talk a lot on the, on video calls and I take little videos and photos and we send these along. But also my parents, they've, they have planned already to come for Christmas next year. Um, mm -hmm. And now they were like, well, actually, we will come in February as well awesome. <laughs> because they are both retired and that's really helpful. So they yeah, have I guess to, they're, they're um, at that time of their life where they, they should be out traveling and yep. spending all of your inheritance. Yep, exactly. <laughs> we don't need it. We work for No, I say that to my parents as well. <laughs> okay. I'm like, 
if someone gave me free money, then it would be a great thing. But I'm, I'm not, I'm not hanging out mm. for you to pass on so that I can get it. You know, yeah. I, I'd much rather have a, a happier life knowing that you're, you're spending it all to the full. I mean, I mean, there's, there's a difference. Yeah. If you want to give it to the cat's home or something <laughs> like that, but it's your money, go out and spend it, live your life. I'm doing the same thing. That's what we should all really do. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it does encourage like my dad, he, um, doesn't speak English at all, but okay. he um, bought himself a, a book and a course, and he's learning English now. And awesome. they've never travelled the- far, but now they will. And like it does encourage them, or it did encourage them to go above and beyond. To how does it make you feel then, knowing that you're you've changed your parents' life? I'm a so little bit. proud. <laughs> I'm honestly so so proud of them. And um, yeah, they're so strong. They're dealing very well with it or at least they don't let me show <laughs> their emotions yeah, no, if they're struggling. I know what you mean. um and yeah it's i thought it would be way harder for them and it's it's good uh, do you know what I, I feel a little bit like that sometimes with with my wife's family mm. I'm, I'm half filipino my mum's from the philippines my dad's english yeah they met while they were living in hong kong oh. um so for us it's always been a case of we, we travel to go to places mm. or, or the whole concept of of living somewhere else yeah. other than your own country isn't isn't alien isn't foreign to us yeah or to me anyway but for my wife before she'd met me her idea of a holiday was going for two weeks somewhere in the Mediterranean so that she can get a tan and have someone wait on her hand and foot um and and I remember the first time we went backpacking in Thailand and then Mm. to to first time to visit the Philippines she was like what's this what what are people doing she she didn't really didn't understand so if you can help your own family to become I don't want to say worldly, like it's that they're they're not a better person as a result of it, because that's not fair. But yeah. if you can encourage them to go out of their comfort zone as well, and then and then have them enjoy it, then it's you're winning, aren't you? You're, you're yeah. always thinking about things from a, a very polarized view. What's it going to be like? But mm. yeah, no, I don't think anyone ever really thinks about well, w- what can be the good things yeah. that everyone can get out of this? Because yeah. um, there's always going to be bad things in whatever choice you make, mm. isn't it? And I think it is very easy to um, to think about all the things that you are losing or that you will be leaving behind. But actually, I've learned that, yeah, there could also be things that you are gaining or not even you're gaining, but even your family is gaining something yeah. with that move. So. Yeah, it's, it's a very it's a very human nature thing, isn't it? Mm. To to always worry about what are you going to lose. We're always yeah. concerned about what we've got mm. and whether we're going to lose it. We don't ever think about what are we going to gain. I think that's that's like an Australian thing, isn't it? Have you noticed now living in Australia, they love to gamble. Yes, there's gambling yeah. everywhere. You go down the pub, and then you can have a go on the pokies. Yeah, and I think that's that's one of the positive bits of the australian mindset that is that they they often think about well if i lose 20 bucks i lose 20 bucks but i, I could get 50 bucks i could yeah. get more and they're always kind of focusing if you like take take a bit of a punt and yeah. you never know what you could get Let, let's mm. focus on what we're going to get rather than what we might lose yeah no that's true i i was also very much in my comfort zone and like i needed that safety net and moving mm-hmm. here made me realize well, yeah, we can go outside of our comfort zone and it doesn't necessarily need to be bad or a bad experience. And actually... How did you meet your husband? Uh, online. Oh, yep. <laughs> you're a fellow online meeter. Yep. Sam and I met the same way. Uh, and how long were you together before you got married? Um, a year and a half. That awesome. also was, um, yeah, COVID was handy in a sense that he could work remotely and he could, he then moved into my place because we were living in different states because Germany has very Mm -hmm. small states so we basically lived on the border but it was different states and in Australia they closed state borders and we're like Mm -hmm. oh if that happens for us uh, it'll be tough because we did meet prior to COVID but pretty much right before COVID hit so we could meet in person we had a nice date experience we got to know each other but then it was like oh yeah so how are we doing this from now on? Um, hey, it's either going to make or break the relationship, isn't it? Yeah, and it, it was... And, and good for you, it, it made it. Exactly. We were like, well, what? because it was in an early stage of the relationship, we were like, well, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. There's not much to lose. 
So yeah, you'll find out try. pretty quick when you're having to live with each, with each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 but it was good. No, he's the perfect um, housemate. I Aww, very much perfect husband it. now. Yep, that's all such great. <laughs> um, so now living in Australia, what's you, you said you had a pretty, pretty cushy journey, mm. but what's been the biggest challenge so far? Um, there was more administration than I thought it would be. Um, I did have to go to, uh, what's it, Transport Rails Voters twice because I thought I had all the documents they could possibly need. Mm-hmm. No, I hadn't. <laughs> what were you missing? Uh, I was missing a physical bank card because I only okay. I, I um, am with a bank where you basically do everything online and you have everything on the phone. And mm-hmm. I was like, no, I don't need a physical card. Turns out I do. <laughs> yeah, they need to see it, don't they? You probably got some some old lady who wanted every, to do everything exactly by the book. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and I also need a Medicare card, which came a few weeks later. Or I didn't Could they not it. take the online one? I didn't even have that one. Cause, oh, yeah, we you actually. can get it on the app, can't you? Yeah, nowadays. Yep, we can. But yeah, that was just additional. It was easier for them to have the medical. Yeah, because I was told when I went mm. that I needed the um, Medicare, the physical card. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I'm pretty sure I've been told that you can just use the online yeah. one. Yeah. And they said, no, you've you got to go and get it. So I, I went and got it and then I came back another day. Yeah. And then the, the new lady that I got, she said, no, no, we could have taken the old one. Yep. Like, Do you know what? This Department of Transport or Main Roads or whatever it's yep. called, you, you just seem to get a different person saying a different thing a every single time. Yeah, second you just bring as much as you want straight. and hope that they've got it. Yep, exactly. And honestly, <laughs> I, w- I said I waited for 40 minutes because there's heaps of people there at the moment. I think there was mm. a data scandal or something. <laughs> oh, was, it, was that the Optus thing? Mm. Everyone, everyone wants a new... Um... Yeah, needs a new driver's license and yep. new pain veteran, whatever. So it was a huge wait up. And there was one person was like, oh, I hope I don't have to go to him. Of course, I went there. Of course, <laughs> of yeah, you, course you got the same the, luck as me. Oh. <laughs> but the second time was very, very good. And the lady was super nice and it was much better experience. So, have faith. Awesome. <laughs> well, at least you got a better one the second time. Yep. <laughs> how is your life different now in Australia than it was in, in Germany? Um, since it is quite early and I have not worked yet um, here in Australia, it is Just one long holiday. A very long moment. holiday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have uh, heaps of time and enjoy the outdoors. That'll change, of course. But um, no, the biggest thing is um, that I actually I really like to walk everywhere and that's okay here on the Gold Coast it'll be better in Brisbane hopefully because walkability is uh, not 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 the strong suit of Australia I would say it's very calm no they, they do like to drive places don't they yep drive through bottle crazy. shops yeah that's yeah, proof that people don't even like to walk there yep <laughs> so did you not do a lot of walking in Germany or um yeah we also did but um the difference is you have layers over layers over layers because it's cold and it's rainy and like you have the same saying in England, but uh, one day you can have all seasons in one day. Yeah. Or apparently if you live in Melbourne, it can be the same as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We haven't been that. It kind of puts me off wanting to go to Melbourne. Same, right? <laughs> we were, I enjoy the sunshine. We were thinking about moving um, to Melbourne because good job opportunity. And I was like, do you know what? Let's try the north first and if it's too hot and humid in summer then we can always move south well you'll get a bit of a baptism of fire having christmas in townsville i hear that's pretty warm yeah (laughs) have they got air conditioning up there they have air conditioning and they have a pool so oh you'll be be. fine then (laughs) just just live in the pool (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah what are your plans for the future then? A- apart from you know finding some jobs because you've only been here for a month, mm. what what are your big plans? Yeah, we do want to um, buy a house. Ideally, the Australian dream. We want that, and we're kind of hoping that the housing crisis is getting better. What was your house like in Germany, and then what house do you want in Australia um, to live the dream? We did live in the attic, like it was a renovated. Um, apartment but mm-hmm. as I said the biggest thing is we didn't have any outdoor private outdoor space and that's a big thing for me I do want even if it is a small yard I do want like just an area to go outside especially with a kid 
like they'll yeah. be much easier um yeah and that's why i'm like yeah you know in place that that would be nice also we've since um there was such a big build up into the move or prior to the move we were like ah nice couch will be nice but we we will move so we should not buy anything at all Um, do you find that the australian homes are bigger than in germany yeah yeah the homes yeah we we found that straight away yeah but i have noticed in germany it's very common to have a basement. That's mm-hmm. not a thing here. <laughs> no, no, we we didn't have basements in in England okay. either. Yeah. Well, I, I think here it's just lazy builders. Yeah. I mean, if there's any builders listening to this, you're, you're not lazy. <laughs> you're actually very very smart and efficient. Yeah. But because a lot of the homes they don't even have two stories. Mm. They're just because the, there's so much land yeah. that the plot sizes you can just build a, a single story house. Yeah. And obviously, it's a lot easier to build a single story house. And, and then cheaper. if you want to add in the fact of well, we want a basement as well. That means I've got a dip. Yeah. Like, I'm already digging for your pool, mate. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you don't need a basement as well. If you want, if you want more space, we'll just build another room on. That's, exactly. that's What kind of house are you looking for in Australia? Then, what what's the dream home for you? Uh, the dream home is a four bedroom place because you know you need a guest room, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> There's uh, a, a lineup of people who want to visit, so mm-hmm. you gotta think of them. Um, and it has a nice outdoor, indoor, outdoor area where we can have mm-hmm. all our meals and have a barbie and the pizza oven. Really do want a pizza oven. I'm torn if I want to pull or not because it is a lot of work. Do you know what? I, I was asked by my friend as well the other day because she's thinking about getting mm. a pool. And she said, what is it like? Is it worth it? the hassle yeah. to have a pool? And I said, probably right now, if I'm really, really honest, no, it's not because uh, Aurora's still in that process of learning to swim, mm-hmm. so I can't really kind of trust her yep. um, without major supervision. The youngest isn't really at a swimming stage yeah. yet, but I know that in three, four, five years' time, that thing is going to get used a lot. Mm. So will it be worth it then? Yep. Um, yeah. Will I have the money to, to spend on, on having a pool installed in my house if it was, I had to wait and didn't have one now? Probably not. So <laughs> I would go as far as to say if you can find, when you, when you do eventually look for that forever home, I would, I would advise if you do see one with a pool and it, it ticks all of the other boxes that you're looking for, then it's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's not a bad thing at all. Yeah. Especially for kids. Yeah. That's, that's it. Like, it would be a no, like it would not be a no go if the house had a pool, but mm. it is not the necessity. Like we would also take a house without a pool. <laughs> What's what surprised you the most about coming to Australia? Um, it does get cold. <laughs> yeah. Did you bring any cold weather stuff? I brought like a pair of jeans and a jumper, and I could have yeah. brought people brought um two or three <laughs> what did you do with all of your stuff that you didn't bring i left it at home <laughs> oh, t- I stored tell, it at tell my your parents. parents when they come over here to bring <laughs> yeah. do you know what you can do um if you've got it all and you've got a spare suitcase we we did a send my bag yeah we we just did that we asked our sam's parents to put a few things do you know what we i think actually we were a little bit this is the only time i've ever been a bit forward planning yeah i think we already had one made and we said, when we get there, can you? And we've got an address. Yeah. Can you just send this along? We have the same. Um, yeah. There's yeah. A, no, they're they're reasonably cheap, reasonably quick, good service. Definitely better than having over luggage at the airport. That's ridiculously yeah. expensive. Don't do that. Yeah. No. If you if you do find when you're moving and you want to send some extra stuff. Yeah. And you, you don't want to go for, we, we, uh, we did a move cube mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So sending some of the larger things, I mean, we filled that to the brim. Yeah. We couldn't have put anything else in there, but, uh, if you've just got kind of something in the middle, one or two boxes, something that's going to fit in a suitcase, definitely use a semi bag. Yeah. And yeah, I suppose uh, we were caught out by the same thing. We didn't bring any cold yeah. weather stuff in our first winter. We were like, Oh my God, we need to go to Kmart and buy something. And it's not even winter. Like we came in spring and it was like, I expected it to be a bit warmer than it was. And the first two Two weeks it was quite quite cold and rainy and like, oh well it's the night time isn't it <laughs> yep yep it gets cold the at nights, night mm, even at the moment i think i took mm. the dog for a walk this morning and i had to put a coat on yep 
Last night. I mean, I had shorts as well, so that's probably not helping. I could have probably got away with it. (laughs) Too keen. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Is is there anything else that you kind of uh, has has surprised you a little bit? Um, Yeah, walkability. You walk somewhere and then you're on the footpath and suddenly there's no footpath anymore. I know. Mm, You're not supposed to be there. What? (laughs) In, In Germany, do they have footpaths like on both sides of the street? Yeah everywhere yeah. i think it is a requirement and yeah here, and, and here you, you're going along it's like where's the footpath oh it's, it's only on that side yeah and then you're right it just stops yeah and also sometimes um there's even like a, a footpath crossing but it's not um down to the road and it's just a green okay. green stretch and also there's just two instead of a box crossing they just have two sides so you always have to go the long way for example Sometimes it just yeah. doesn't make sense. It's not built for people walking. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure if I'm, I, I know when you're in the city, then there's pavements everywhere. Yeah. You, you, it's very good for walkability. But the further you get out from the city, definitely, yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? That though? might be a you, I just, I, thing. Cause... No, no, that, that's definitely where we are in Brisbane as well. Okay. But we're, we're not in the city. Yeah. And yeah, we notice it. People just walk on the road. Mm. I mean, that's that's kind of a good thing because you've got these massive, great big parking yeah. slash um, bike lanes. Very wide. But yeah, if, yeah, if there's no path. I, I, Ironically, I probably feel safer here not having a pavement all the time okay. than I did in the UK where I had a pavement. Yeah. What's... Just not that people are going to get on the yeah. pavement and drive <laughs> me down, but it's, everything's just so much smaller, isn't it? I, imagine, mm. I only ever went to Germany once. We went to Hamburg okay. um, yeah. around Christmas time yeah. and oh, no, New Year's. Yeah. Oh my God, they, they love a firework, yeah. don't they? <laughs> Everyone does it. Yeah, that'll be oh. different here as well. <laughs> that, that, well, have you have you haven't had um, a New Year's here yet, no. have you? Yeah, you don't have any fireworks. Yep. Well, you do, but it, they're all um, professionally organised. And they're and at like nine things. p.m. It's not even on. Yeah. It's not even on midnight. Oh, you've got kids what? now. You, you'll you'll realise yeah, that's that'd a great be thing. Yeah, that'll be handy. But still, they don't they don't want to wait up till midnight. <laughs> and to be honest, I don't really want to wait up till midnight either. <laughs> We're getting I old. Go to bed. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I'm getting tired. That's what it is. Yeah. It's nothing to do with that age. <laughs> you you wait if you want to have a second one. Oh my yeah. god. We we talked about the the difficulties with parents living on the other side of the world, but do you have any other regrets about your move? Not yet. <laughs> I mean, it is thing. still quite fresh to be honest, but not so far. Nothing that comes to mind. Nothing that's jumping out. You think, oh God, what have we done? No. Other than the building work. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's my brother-in-law. No, <laughs> no, no, no. The no. Bathroom. <laughs> Absolutely, someone's got to do it. Yeah. Can you come around and do mine? He's a plumber, so it's, that's handy. Oh, to no, have one I'm going to have to take his details then, if, <laughs> yeah. if he's ever up in Brisbane. If you could do it all again, what would you change? Um, what would we change? It was good to travel with the like not the baby baby but not a toddler yet so that was very handy um not that did you have a bassinet that you Mm. could put them in and we sat next to it that was really good because there was another mum who sat like four rows away from the bassinet Mm -hmm. that's a bit weird having the baby there and not just picking yeah can you can you watch my kids yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um it sounds like you've done everything pretty well it it was pretty well even um for jet lag because we arrived at the at night time basically here in brisbane and we could mm-hmm. go straight to bed and then wake up after nine hours of sleep and we were in the time zone already there you go, really jet lag tip. Yeah, try and get a flight that's landing late in the afternoon. I think I, I'd imagine probably most of them would be doing that, wouldn't they? Or the other way around, where you land early in the morning and then. Oh no! Can you imagine that the longest day ever trying to stay awake? Yep. <laughs> that's what my parents are facing. <laughs> oh, is it? Mm. Is that what they're going to have? Oh. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I booked the flights. <laughs> You booked the flights for them. You stitched them up. You, yeah. you didn't even give them your own piece of advice. Yeah. 
what, what was the what was the price difference? I bet it wasn't that much. It as was well. he, it was heaps. It was like oh, thousand was it? euros. No, like nah, sorry. <laughs> you have, oh yeah, you for, can for have a thousand nap, euros, but... you can have the day of hell. Yeah, but you can have a nap. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> well, what's fine. the worst that's going to happen? Well, if you're going to have to go to sleep, then you have to go to sleep. Exactly. At least you've got a thousand euros. Yep. What advice do you have for anyone wanting to make the move themselves, and and also thinking about you know a, a partner visa? They snag themselves an Aussie. Yep. <laughs> Online dating is great. <laughs> you should try. <laughs> um, no, actually, um, just talk about it early. Communicate it. Um, picture what your life could be like. Start early and try to get out of your comfort zone. It is scary or it can be scary. And leading up, I was like, are we doing the right thing? And yeah, it was because, yeah, of course, you're leaving – the known you you it's a big leap into the unknown and you're like um okay what if what if what if um how many times did you have that fear of are we doing the right thing countless times (laughs) and i was very i was very positive about moving and excited but still you are like okay but you don't you know the grass is always greener on the other side so you don't want to be naive but mm. you also don't want to um, like be your own obstacle and hinder yourself from ever trying, because that was so. Keep keep a positive mindset Ooh. about it. it yeah, you, you're gonna get what those is the, negative thoughts. What's the worst thing that can happen? You have to. Oh, we would have to move back. That's okay. That's mm. okay for my partner. We've talked about that as well. Have a plan B and maybe C. How how long had he lived away from Australia? Um, it was the last time, like three years. But he did parts of his degree in Germany already, so he did spend okay. a few years, um, or maybe up to a year, um, in Germany already. So he was already really used to the whole idea of living away. Mm. Had, had you always lived in Germany? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so yeah, that, that's that's perfect then, really, isn't it? Because you're the one that actually, do you know what? I'm not really sure about this yeah. move, but you're the one that's that's driven it with the positive mindset. Exactly. And I was, yeah, everyone uh, towards the move, everyone was like, well, hey, for you, it's easy. You're going home. And I was like, you know what? Home is where my family is and it's, it's not a place. So wherever mm-hmm. my daughter and life will be that's where home is and that was also very helpful for me to be like okay if it doesn't work out it's fine for him we can find another solution um is that the best thing that he's done for you to help you mm, move yeah yeah for sure (laughs) awesome awesome thanks Beck, for sharing your journey with us and i hope it's given you all a better insight into what it's like upping sticks and moving with a new young family Thanks for giving us an insight into the partner visa and what it's like living and moving from Germany. If you want to see more of what life is like in Australia, then you can check out our YouTube channel at That Johnston Life. And if you've been inspired to see if you can make the move yourself and you also want to learn more about partner visas, then speak to our friends at True Blue Migration Services. Follow the hundreds of positive reviews by filling out their free, no obligation visa assessment at www.truebluemigration.com. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.